to a tutorial on parathyroid gland and the production of parathyroid hormone. The function of parathyroid hormone is to increase blood calcium levels in order to make sure that there's adequate amounts of calcium available for nervous tissue, cardiac, smooth, and skeletal muscle tissue. To begin, we are going to start with a flow diagram that looks at how the parathyroid gland secretes parathyroid hormone in responses to changes in circulating volumes of calcium. So the trigger for the parathyroid gland is a decrease in blood calcium levels. Now the parathyroid glands are located on the posterior aspect of the thyroid. So in my illustration here, I'm going to draw the trachea in place, and I'm going to draw, draw the posterior aspect of the thyroid gland as it would wrap around to the back of the trachea. And in this, I'm going to have four pockets of tissue, and those four pockets are the thyroid glands. Inside the thyroid Inside the parathyroid glands, not the thyroid glands, inside the parathyroid glands are going to be chief cells, and these chief cells secrete parathyroid hormone. So the chief cells are what makes PTH, or parathyroid hormone. Now the parathyroid hormone has an effect on several tissues in the body. Remember, the purpose of parathyroid hormones is to increase circulating amounts of blood calcium. To do that, I have a couple of tissues that I can target to help increase the blood calcium levels. One is going to be bone tissue. And that bone tissue will be sensitive to amounts of parathyroid hormone. Two is going to be the kidney, and three three is going to be the intestine. So I've got bone, kidney, and intestine. The purpose of PTH, parathyroid hormone, is to elevate the amounts of blood calcium. So the bone is going to begin by increasing the osteoclast activity. You may remember talking about parathyroid hormone from the bone chapter when we looked at ways to store calcium and to liberate calcium and the activity of the osteoblasts and the osteoclasts. So not only do I increase osteoclast activity, but in conjunction I increase the number of osteoclasts. So I get more cells digesting bone and I get more activity of those bone digesting cells. Now, there is this side effect. Anytime that calcium moves in or out of the bone, it does so with phosphate. So I'm also going to see an increased release of phosphate. into circulation. Now the kidney also will have functions related to the reabsorption or secretion of calcium. So when parathyroid hormone is in place, the kidney is going to begin to increase calcium reabsorption. Now the first time you absorbed the calcium was in the intestines, which we'll talk about in just a minute, but it's important to note that the kidneys are going to reabsorb the calcium and return it to circulation. Now, the kidneys are also going to be important in making vitamin D. So, one of the precursors in the step-by-step -step process in the production of vitamin D involves enzymes that are produced by the kidney, and when parathyroid hormone is produced, the kidney produces more of these enzymes to facilitate the production of active vitamin D. And then also, I'm going to increase the excretion of phosphate. 
So I don't want to have too much phosphate in the blood, and since phosphate is coming out of the blood while the osteoclasts are breaking down calcium, I'm going to find dumping of that extra phosphate into the kidneys or in through the renal system. Now, what is it that the intestines do? Well, the intestines are going to be that location where we first absorb calcium. So we're going to get calcium absorption, but in order to get calcium absorption from the intestines, I have to have vitamin D. So if vitamin D is present, the calcium can be absorbed in the intestines, which hopefully we have plenty of because parathyroid hormone is told the kidney to increase the production of enzymes to form the active form of vitamin D. Now, in addition, I have all this leftover or excessive amounts of phosphate, so I also find that I increase excretion of phosphate from the intestines as well. And I'm actually going to change this from excretion to secretion because really what the kidneys do, are doing is secreting fluids, whereas excretion is something that takes place in the digestive system. So all three of these things, the effect on bone, the effect on the kidney, and the effect on the intestine are going to serve to help increase blood calcium levels. When blood calcium levels return to homeostasis, we create a negative feedback loop and we have removed the signal of the low blood calcium levels that triggered these parathyroid glands to begin the secretion of parathyroid hormone. So let's consider what type of hormone parathyroid hormone is. Parathyroid hormone is a polypeptide hormone. So it's a small protein hormone that works by the G protein second messenger system. So this is going to have a relatively short half-life and be able to respond quickly to fluctuations in the amount of circulating blood calcium so let's look at our pathologies. Now, hypoparathyroidism is the term for a hyposecretion of the parathyroid hormone. It is important to note that you cannot survive, or at least survive very poorly, without a parathyroid gland. So even in cases where patients have to have a thyroidectomy, the doctors, the surgeons, are very careful to maintain the parathyroid glands on the posterior aspect of the trachea. A person with hypoparathyroidism will express hypocalcemia. Their blood levels of calcium will be too low. This has no effect on the bone. The bone's the reservoir for the calcium, so we have plenty of calcium inside the bone. But we start seeing changes in the nervous tissue, in skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle, and smooth muscle. So at the case of the skeletal muscle, we'll have increased neuromuscular excitability. It'll be easier for an action to potential to be generated at the skeletal muscle. The smooth muscle will also increase its activity and will end up with diarrhea. And then the cardiac muscle develops what we call a flaccid heart. So the heart needs calcium for contraction, and with low amounts of calcium, we find that the patient becomes bradycardic. Hyperparathyroidism will have the opposite effect. If we have hyperparathyroidism, we have released too much calcium into circulation. So this patient will either be hypercalcemic or they may have normal blood levels. And that's because we have the thyroid hormones that are trying to decrease blood calcium levels in conjunction with parathyroid hormone. Now, in this case, if I'm taking too much calcium, this means I'm robbing the bones from the stores of calcium. I'm not only losing calcium, I'm also losing phosphate because these two minerals travel together. So the bones will weaken and potentially become osteoporotic. In this case, now I've taken away calcium from the neuromuscular junction, so this is going to further hyperpolarize the cell and decrease the excitability at the neuromuscular junction, which means the muscles are going to be sluggish in their response and the person is going to feel like they just can't move that well. Smooth muscle will also be affected when we have too much calcium, we end up with constipation and we will have increased heart contractions as well. 
So the moral of the story is parathyroid hormone is going to be important for bone, kidney, and intestines to increase the circulating volumes of blood calcium. However, deviations can be life-threatening and we need to maintain the negative feedback system of the parathyroid hormone.